Say good evening. Good evening. Hey, this is an exciting occasion. Are you happy to be here? Yeah. yeah. Are you happy to be here? All right. We had a great time last year. We're going to have a great time this year. I'm Kevin Ingler, for those of you who don't know me. Uh, it's good to be back in Bloomsdale. My mom was born and raised right over this next hill. And we used to come here for family reunions when I was a kid. And I took my wife on our third date here in Bloomsdale, and she's still stuck with me. So that's a, that's a good thing. Well, I'm supposed to do this. I feel like a stewardess. The exits are on your back, to your back. They may be in front of you. They may be behind you. They may be to your side. So take note and look where your nearest exit is. The restrooms are to the rear, to my right. All right? So we've got that established. Uh, it's great to be here. What a great crowd. You know, I, I think they said there was over 20 people that couldn't get in. They're going to be scalping tickets next year. <laughs> like, they're going to be in a push stadium. But I don't know why they asked me to MC. And then I got here and I saw the, I saw the agenda. And I said, you know, they're going to have a ventriloquist. So they must be needing a dummy. So, uh, anyway. Um, want to make special you have everybody has a program here okay so if you look these people helped underwrite the cost of this event so that your donations could go to this great cause so Perry County Memorial Hospital St. Genevieve County Memorial Hospital burn bomb and contracting they are our major platinum sponsors so make note that they're on back uh, I want to go ahead and mention these now because I'll forget later uh, Schumer Plumbing Buckeyes of Perryville uh, MRV Bank, Don Heil Oil, uh, Central Fleet, Bear Engineering, and Loda Ag Services. Let's thank them for their gold and platinum sponsorship. <laughs> it's going to take a little while to serve the meal, but if you remember last year, I go on the banquet circuit a lot, and this was the best be uh, meal of any banquet we were at. It was great. So just be patient. I'd like to recognize a few people. One, we're going to talk about a little bit later, but the Knights of Columbus. I'm proud to be a member of the Knights of Columbus. And when I was at Our Lady this past year, they had a baby bottle fundraiser. They've had them all over. And, and later on, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But the Knights of Columbus have stood up and bought ultrasound machines for our, for our pregnancy recenters all across the state. They've stepped into the gap. I'd like to recognize the Knights of Columbus here tonight. If you're in the Knights of Columbus, stand up, please, real quickly, and be recognized. Thank you. And uh, I know the future speaker will talk about this, but that is the biggest, biggest factor when a young woman comes here and to any of the pregnancy resource centers and hears their child's heartbeat and sees it, and then it's very, very difficult to destroy that life. So that is a huge factor. It's very costly, and, and they're stepping in. Also wanted to recognize all the uh, ministers, the pastors here tonight. Would you stand up and be recognized for your participation in this community? The leadership. I know it's really Thank you. I want to recognize a colleague of mine, a guy that uh, was, uh, worked with me when I was in the Senate, and uh, is your state senator, and I'm proud to serve with him. He is a very faith-filled person that I know has been involved, as we have with the Park Hills Pregnancy Resource Center. Senator Gary Romine's here, if you'll recognize him. <laughs> now, we can do the invocation if, if uh, Pastor Roger would come up. Uh, we've got Pastor Roger Faulkner who's going to do this. I, I don't know if you knew this, but I heard a story on him the other day. It seems that he was going out and visiting some of the people that had stopped by the church, some uh, visitors, and he stopped by several uh, homes, but he, he knocked at, at one home, and he knocked, and he could hear somebody sitting there, but they wouldn't come to the door. Well, he knocked again, and they still wouldn't come to the door. And I, you know, Roger's persistent, those of you who know him. Knocked again, still wouldn't come to the door. So what he did is took his business card out from the church there and wrote Revelations 3.20. And left it there. Now, for those of you that aren't quite up on your Bible, that means, behold, I stand at the door and knock. So, the next week, in the collection plate, 
was this card with another cryptic message. It said, Genesis 3.10. To, even Roger doesn't know all of them. So he went back and looked at the Bible and it says, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid. <laughs> for I was naked. been set aside to uh, uh, bring to the forefront uh, a need that we have in our community. Father God, I thank you for these men and these women that have stepped forward and said, I want to be a part. And Father God, I thank you for the calling on their lives, and I thank you for them answering that call. Father God, remind us that uh, it's a call in each one of our lives because how precious uh, life really is. So Father, we just ask that you would bless each speaker that stands here tonight, each one that's come tonight, each one that uh, will go from this place tonight different. Because Father, we realize that uh, that is... Uh, <coughs> That is what you call us to be, a different people. And let us leave different tonight with a greater awareness of uh, needs around about us. And don't let us ever come to the understanding of the thought, this doesn't involve us. But Father, let us open our minds and our hearts to the needs of uh, even the hurting yet even tonight. Lord, we thank you for the meal that we're about ready to receive. We thank you for uh, the hands that prepared it. We thank you for those that uh, have gave that uh, we might partake of this meal. We ask that we would take of this food and nourish our bodies. And Father God, our bodies would be used uh, for your service. And Father, we never want to forget uh, any time we come to you in prayer, most of all, we thank you for Jesus who loved us. We thank you for Jesus who died for us. We thank you for Jesus who's coming again. We ask these things in his name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank you. If the servers can start with the dinner service, we're going to be ready. We're going to be selling 50-50 rack, raffle tickets with over 300 people here tonight. We should be able to raise quite a bit of money. So be generous. Take some raffle tickets. All right? So go ahead and start serving the meal and we'll be ready to roll. Show so they can start the video now. Thank you. Go Carly. Very good. Very good. And Trevor has one. For those of you who got a chance to see the video, you can see a lot of the progress that was made this past year. A lot of volunteers. And we're going to talk about that for a few minutes. But first, I'm going to introduce you to a few people. Um, Executive Director Lauren Moore, would you stand up as a call? I want to recognize. Right. Back and back there. Uh, Medical Director Dr. Tony Lamb from St. Genevieve County. And here are the Board of Directors. If you hold your applause until I name them all. Kenny Williams, Chris Drury. Elaine Bauman, Elaine Stoll, Lynn Davis, Carrie Bauman, Mark Renault, Sarah Layton, and Pastor Joe Mancuso. Let's show them some appreciation. <laughs> All right, now we're going to talk a little bit about things that have happened this past year. I'm going to introduce uh, Chris Drury. 
Uh, you know, I was in this room about six months ago, the week before, well, right in the middle of the World Series, we were doing a fundraiser for the, the grade school here, and Chris and I had donated our tickets to the World Series, and they auctioned them off for like $1,600, and I think one of your friends or cousins bought those that, that time, and he was telling me that he went to the World Series, I mean, 800 bucks a seat, pretty steep, and they sat through it, and after the first couple innings, they noticed nobody was sitting next to him. And there was an old man sitting on the other side, and he said, sir, do you know who's this he says, yeah, it's my wife's. Your wife? Yeah. He says, yeah, we, we've attended every World Series since 64. We've had home seats and uh, season tickets, and uh, she died. And, and, but I, I thought I'd, I'd come to the game. And uh, he said, well, that's great. Well, a couple of rands, he said, sir, you don't mind me asking you, uh, you know, these are pretty pricey tickets. Is there a reason you didn't ask kids or a friend or a friend of the family or just an acquaintance to come to the game? And he said, well, I would have, but they're all at a funeral.
not stand, but that's a testament to how good the meat is, I believe. <laughs> okay, had first success story when a husband of a married couple called seeking an abortion. The call came automatically forwarded to Lauren's mobile early one morning as she was preparing uh, to go to work that day in November. Just thank you. Moved in in November, and this call came in November. I do believe the call came before we were actually moved in. She knew what to say and when to say it, and things have turned out where an abortion-minded couple have elected to give life. Reached a milestone in January with $10,000 in total donation directly related to the sale of the faith bracelets. And this was achieved within the first 10 months of sales. And I got to thank my wife Connie, that was her brainchild to get that started. And many family and friends have been in our house, it's been converted to a sweatshop and a basement. <laughs> things together. So we had a nice finished basement, but now it's that. <laughs> we hosted a weekend open, we hosted many, weekend open houses in January and February for clergy, for Knights of Columbus, for volunteers and contractors, and general public. We had second success stories when a teenage girl's phone call was forwarded to Lawrence Mobile about 11.30 on a Saturday night, and she answered the phone. So a little story about that. Lauren was at an all-day training along with Elaine Stoll in Jeff City. They were driving home. Lauren had dropped Elaine off, and it was between Bloomsdale and home in St. Genevieve, and the phone rings. And I don't think that the young lady on the other end really expected to speak to a person. She thought she'd be leaving a message. But she got talked through that night and the meeting was arranged for Monday morning in our facility. And they met for four hours on a Monday morning. And when that young lady left there, she had chosen to give life. So as you think about those two instances, what if that was you? And you had to speak to that person that's maybe abortion-minded. That's a pretty tough challenge. All right, where are we headed in the next 12 months? Our goals are to create a prayer chain call list. Prayer chain uh, participants can be notified when an abortion-minded person will be entering or has entered our building. The prayers uh, should be as much for the options for women employee or volunteer as it is for the client. The board has often commented on the stress level of, of one that you know must come to a meeting with these people. And we remind ourselves and Lauren that God doesn't choose the qualified, but qualifies the chosen. There are notepads at the 50-50 table, and I failed to mention that to anybody else. I just put them there when I walked in. I see Carrie has them. Everybody's going to end up with a pen before the night's over, so there'll be a place there where you can just write your name and your phone number down if you'd like to be on this prayer chain. Next goal, to effectively advertise through billboards and the internet as a professional pregnancy health center. We will be assisted with this advertising by the Vitae Foundation, Heartbeat International, and the Knights of Columbus. To continue the services we advertise, pregnancy tests, ultrasound images, consultation, pregnancy classes, parenting classes, and material needs for infants. We also have a goal to continue training, providing, provided in large part by Heartbeat International for Lauren and select volunteers. We also have a goal to hire a second employee as Lauren's assistant and on a part-time basis. We look to remain focused on the fact that life begins with conception 
which is a gift from our God, and through our work, lovingly bring an awareness to this fact to those who may not be aware or have previously believed. And another goal is to remain committed to our supporters, that's you, and be ever mindful that we, are on, we only move forward with you. Our actions must be fiscally and morally in tune with yours. At 615 Kiefer Street, this is where the rubber hits the road. This is where the action is. For all who support options for women through prayer, time, talent, or treasure, take ownership in the success stories that we have had and those yet to be had. Page two. The board of directors would like to thank the Knights of Columbus. What, what gratitude we have for what's been given. We believe that God's hand places people in the right place at the right time. We are blessed that Ron Stoopy was elected KFC District 45 deputy just prior to the formation of the Center for Life and just prior to the fund drive known as the Baby Bob Brigade, which funds the purchase of a new ultrasound machine. Another blessing is that Kerry Ballman is the Grand Knight of this council and a fellow board member. These men committed themselves to the success of the brigade through communication and coordination. Ron ensured that all five councils in his district participate in the fund drive. These include councils from Bealey Apple Creek, Fredericktown, Perryville, St. Genevieve, and Bloomsdale. So the board thanks Ron Stoopy and all Knights for their support of Options for Women. in a name. A name can be created or selected to portray an organization's mission or preferred image. About two years ago, when a group of pro-life Christians were meeting regularly and making steady progress towards forming a non-profit corporation with bylaws and a mission of opening and operating a pregnancy resource center in St. Jen, a name was selected to portray the image and the mission. That is how the St. Genevieve Area Center for Life name was adopted. As months and meetings passed by, the Board of Directors became enlightened and understanding of the fact that the name with the word life is not going to serve our mission very well. The Center for Life was moving ever closer to opening its doors at our facility but it was apparent that it needed to portray an image that was inviting to those who are abortion-minded. So the abortion-minded, you know, they are the target audience. These are the ones who are most need of help, and our organization does not want to turn them off by advertising life. Therefore, the Board of Directors established the name Options for Women as the operational name of the Pregnancy Resource Center. The board's intention, only a year ago, was to maintain the Center for Life name as the fundraising arm. What the board has found is that it's difficult to establish the identity of options for women while maintaining the Center for Life name. It's becoming confusing. You might be confused right now. We, the board, don't want to inadvertently portray an image that can, be, can deter those who are abortion-minded and need our help. So you also, may, like I said, be confused of the intermingling names. So our goal is to diminish the use of the name St. Genevieve Area Center for Life and promote the name Options for Women. This action does not change the goals and missions of the organization and its many supporters. Thank you. I thought you said there was going to be no mothers uh, involved with any of the comments, but, you know, I, I shouldn't say this, but I was born and raised in Festus. 
And when I was growing up, you were all applied the same way. What was Farmington known for? Everybody, well, I'll tell you, it's politically correct, the nut house, right? And I swear, I remember my mom saying one time, Kevin, if you don't quit acting crazy, you're going to have to spend the rest of your life in Farmington. It's like a psychic. Anyway, Father, I saw you just come in. I, you just missed some really good material. Would you like me to go back over the jokes? Again? No, okay, I see you later. Okay. Thank you. Um, we're going to go to last year. Is Renee someplace close? Renee, are you going to Renee Brooks, are you someplace close? Renee, she can start up. Last year, one of the highlights of uh, the evening was hearing from Renee and her story. And we've asked her to come back and give us a little update. So you're almost up here. Now, Father, this one's for you. Do you know where, what heck is? Heck. It's where you go if you don't believe in gosh. <laughs> so this has taken a lot of courage to come tell our story. So let's hear it for Renee. Give us an update this year.
She was so happy to hear that I was getting my life back that she also wanted to, me to have my baby back as well. She called me and we talked for what seemed like hours. She forgave me in my past and we are now good friends. As of today, I stand before you clean and sober for three and a half, over three and a half years.
me ha dado fuerza, Dios me ha dado a mi familia, Él me ha dado la música. Con mi música yo me siento bien conectado con mi Dios. Eso me ayudó a crecer. Me ha calmado el corazón. La gente me ha preguntado, Tony, ¿por qué te sentís tan entero? Porque tengo estas cosas que me hace todo. Tengo mi familia que es preciosa. Mi corazón quiere bailar, quiere cantar, quiere vivir en la vida. Porque en los ojos de mi Dios, yo, yo soy entero. Eres mi Dios. Y en ti confía.
Tonight is about life. Tonight is not only about the little that are coming to this world. It's about you and God. It doesn't matter what age you are. Life is from the beginning to the end when God calls us. That's the end of our life. Coming into this world that's second. That we are being born in the womb. To me, that's life. If we can save a turtle in Central America, in Florida, why can't we save a human life? Amen? Amen. There's a lot of churches represented here today. I'm so grateful that we come together for such a great cause. We heard Renee speak a little bit. Easy. As some of us already know, life is not easy. Some people have asked me, Tony, how can you live without the arms? If I was like you, I would be able to do it. How can you do it? I don't know any better. I've never had a hand. If you put a hand on this body, I've never used one. I've never had it. I came into this world armless. You might say I'm unarmed. Prayers, something that's going to help us. Gathering like this, and we're going to challenge you to help a little later. The prayer, pray with me. You are my God, Lord, the Lord. You are my God, and the rock on which I stand, and the rock on which I stand. I have found my place in your arms of grace. I have found my place in our good Lord and asking him to help. Now there's something about our good Lord that's a little bit like us. We are made in his image. So I'm going to ask right on your table, maybe you haven't introduced yourselves, maybe you don't know each other, extend the hand and embrace. They say sometimes we're too cold. We're not a culture of embracing a hugging. I pray then you can extend a hand. So I'm going to ask everyone to stand up. I know you might be eating. But stand up. Greet the very people at your table. And maybe someone right next door to you.
And some of us Catholics, they even uh, come to the I'm not sure about that E-word, evangelization. Uh, uh. But if you are here to save a life, especially during the Lenten time, we watch the life go, the life of Jesus. As we nailed him to the tree, we hurt him, we tortured him. I know there's dinner, I know there's food, I know there's noise. But let, let's give this moment to our good Lord. Let's give it to our good Lord. Yes, we love you.
I tell you, I feel honored to be in the Ozarks now, and I feel right in because I'm a, I'm a hillbilly, barefooted. <laughs> I fit in better than you guys with shoes. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I love the Ozarks here. I love the fishing. <laughs> and, uh, and I sit there with the reel and catching those trouts or what have you, bass, whatever. Uh, and what a gift, what a gift it is. Now, I know in the Catholic Church, and I know in some Protestant churches too, uh, we have Lent right now. So we kind of slow things down, we reflect, we think of God, our good Lord. Now this word right now, in the Catholic Church, during the liturgy, during the Mass, is not said at all until the day of Easter. Until the day of Easter. The word is all through you. But I'm going to ask that you help me sing these words because our good Lord, when He died, I, He did something that at first I, I said, why would He do that? He went to hell. Jesus went to hell. For what? After He died, He goes to hell to save us from that damnation. Now I say, He's crazy. Why? Why? Free will. Free will is messed up the human race. I wish it was not like that. I wish we could live loving Christ. Let's say there was no free will. We could love the Lord. There'd be no depression. Can you imagine that in your families? No depression? There'd be no sadness. Could you imagine that? You know, I every day. Hello. <laughs> so from that hurt, that pain, that torture, came a gift that we'll celebrate totally that Easter day. And we'll get to sing and say these words again. Everybody sing Alleluia. Who left great memories 
I could smell the cookies baking that Grandma made with me. I can hear Grandpa's story that he told so tearfully when I was just a young child sitting on his
over here. Yeah, please have a seat. My brother is, is helping me with the sound. So if you would, please put your hands together for a second. Thank you for At the end of the night, we'll come back and close with one last song. So before you leave, we'll close with that one last song after the benediction. Kevin, it's all yours. Thanks. How about Tony Melendez and the Now we asked Tony to autograph a guitar over here. And we're going to auction it off in a few minutes. It's going to be a few minutes. So if you've got an organization that you're sponsoring the table or a group that you would like to talk among yourselves for a second, if you're going to put a bid on this, we'd like to help raise some money. Speaking of raising money, who's selling the 50-50 chances? Wait a second. See, they're not going to buy them back there. Come, come on up. We're going to work the crowd while we ask for money. So let's see. if you haven't had an opportunity to buy a 50-50, Chance, raise your hand. Look at this. All right. So, no, no, wait a second. I guess I didn't explain this right. They're buying them up here. Come, come on up. You can't sell them to each other. There we go. They're starting to move forward. And as they get close to you, raise your hand and make it easier for them. Uh, Congressman Smith was supposed to be here. And with the storm, his first flight was canceled. He still called and said, I'm coming. I got a later flight. And we just found out a little bit ago that it was canceled, too. So uh, he's not going to, and I know Jason very well and known him for years, and, and he, he tries to be here. He's been in state to me a lot, but I mean, I know he was going to try to make it tonight. They come home on Thursdays in the federal. Uh, their, their day in is on Thursday, and that's when they fly home. So he was going to try, but I wanted to say he did uh, make several attempts to get here. Um, wanted... Before we go any further, how about our wait staff from the three schools and our staff? Now, where is he at? Before the evening, we want him to come out because what a great job. Well, what a great job. You know, last year we heard from him. Ladies, and this year we wanted to hear, hear from a, a young man, Michael Work, who uh, is going to have uh, present a testimony for the in the perspective of a father whose child was aborted. And so, Michael, if you would come forward, we'd appreciate you coming forward at this time and giving giving talk. Thanks for coming forward. Uh, good evening. Um, Oftentimes, when uh, when we talk about abortion, when we hear about abortion, we hear about the unborn baby. Uh, we hear about the mother. We don't hear much about the father. He's in the background. He's unheard and unseen, right where Satan wants him to be. And uh, that was me. I was fresh out of a four-year stint in the Air Force. Moved back home with my parents, was going to school, had joined the Air National Guard, had a little bit of money coming in once a month from that, a little bit from the GI Bill, and I was going to school full time and met a young lady and we started dating. One evening, uh, she told me that she was pregnant and uh, obviously we had kind of a dilemma. Uh, I had no job, I was in school. We talked about what to do. Uh, she talked to her mom. I didn't tell anybody. And um, we decided that we needed to go talk to somebody. And we went to Planned Parenthood that told us about the one option. And unfortunately, that's the option we chose. Um, I remember that day going, uh, and I drove her to the clinic and dropped her off. Um, I couldn't go in. I couldn't bear to realize what was about to happen. Um, I drove around for an hour and a half, two hours, I don't remember how long, but I drove around and uh, was just sick to my stomach. 
I went back and picked her up, and, and it was it was done. Um, we rationalized it. We talked about it. We, we, we talked about how we were going to make it right someday when I graduate and get a job and we can get married and have a family. But a few, year, or a few months later, we went our separate ways to live with this and deal with this on our own, which is what I did. I never told anybody about it. I was ashamed. Uh, about six, seven years later, I met who was going to be my wife, Carla, and uh, we were dating and we started going to church. And I believed in God, um, but I wasn't close to God. I didn't know God. Um, we got married in that church. Uh, we joined that church. I was baptized there. And I kept hearing people talk about this life-changing experience, and I'd never really had that. Uh, nothing in my life was any different other than just going to church on Sunday. And uh, we moved to Imperial in 2005. And we started going to First Baptist Church of Festus, Crystal City. And early in 2006, there was that dreaded message that you hear once a year, at least it was for me. That message about the sanctity of life. And I'd heard the message many, many, many times before and, and always dreaded it because it brought back horrible memories about what I had done. And uh, not really realizing, but what I had done and the sin that I had committed kept me from God. It put up a, a big wall between me and Him. And I would never let that wall down. And that day I heard that same message. But for some reason, at the end, of course, the pastor was looking and talking right at me. You've probably been there before. And he said, if this has affected you in any way, God forgives you. Now, I don't know if all those years before that had ever been said. If it had, I hadn't heard it. But for some reason, that day, I heard it loud and clear. And right there in that pew, I asked God to forgive me for that sin, for my sins. I'd asked that same and, and said that same prayer hundreds of times before and never felt any peace, never, never believed it. I couldn't forgive myself, and there's no way God could forgive me for, for what I've done. Um, but that day, I, I literally it felt like the Lord came down and put his arm around me and said, I forgive you, my son. And he took that sin from me and broke that wall down. That day, my life changed. Um, soon after that, I told my wife about what happened. I'd never told anybody before. And probably, uh, I don't know, six, seven months later, we were pregnant with our second daughter. And 12 weeks in, we had an ultrasound, and they came in to break the news that it looks like our baby has Down syndrome. And then again, they started telling us about the option we had, but this time I, did, I didn't want to hear it. That was not an option. So uh, nine months later, uh, our daughter was born, Emily. She had Down syndrome. Uh, two months into her young life, she had open heart surgery. And she's been the biggest blessing in our life that I could even imagine. She's six years old today. She's in first grade, and she's awesome. So, my hope today uh, here in sharing my story is there is hope and there is forgiveness if you believe it and you ask for it. And I, and I hope and I pray that the next young lady that walks through the door that needs to, to speak with somebody and has this dilemma, that you ask where the Father is and get him front and center. Encourage him to be the man he needs to be, the man that God wants him to be. And uh, that's my prayer tonight. Thank you. My dad's been a member there 75 years. He's the guy that stands there with a the walker uh, at the door and greets people. 
know, it's the biggest thing. If you know Fritz, that's it. You know, it's kind of, you know, I didn't find that. I got a Baptist father and a Catholic mother and a Methodist wife and a Presbyterian mother-in-law. <laughs> Time has come for the ask. I'm going to introduce John Applebaum. Now I want you to point out something in your program, something that's rare. This guy has a longer bio than I do, and I don't think that's right. But I'm not going to go through all of it because it's too long. But in 2010, John was elected the state deputy of the Knights of Columbus. He's from Imperial. His wife is here with him. And he's going to come up and address us and talk about a little bit why we're here tonight. So come on up, John. We appreciate you coming up. Well, one person we haven't uh, thanked tonight, we've thanked a lot of people, but uh, I don't think anybody's thanked our great MC, Kevin Engler. So, Kevin, thank you for, uh, for all you've done for our uh, cause and for being here tonight. And thank you all for being here tonight. What a great night this has been. Has this been wonderful or what? You know, I was um, sitting there listening to these to stories and the testimony, these wonderful stories, Tony's story, Renee's, Mike's, uh, who just spoke. And it dawned on me, like, sitting there listening to these, these stories and the, hearing their testimony, I said, what the heck am I doing here? I don't have a story. What testimony can I give? And I thought, maybe my non-story is a story. Because that non, my non-story or story is probably pretty similar to most of yours. When Roe versus Wade was ruled on by the Supreme Court, I was 12 years old. Being pretty young, I didn't fully grasp what that meant, but I knew it was wrong, even at 12. And every day since then, I've considered myself to be pro-life. Of course, every day along that road didn't mean I did a whole lot about it. I mean, what could I do? I was just one person, right? And what I believed in my heart was great between me and God. And God would judge me. But I didn't really have to do anything about it. What could I do? And as I got older, I obviously became more aware of it. I went to law school, got to study Roe versus Wade. And as a lawyer, I can tell you, it's really crap. <laughs> it's legal reasoning. But, and I went on the, I had the occasion to go on the pro-life march in Washington, D.C. Probably a lot of you have been there. All of my kids have been there. My wife has been there several times. But still, I had this nagging feeling that there wasn't a whole lot I could do. Well, God has a strange way of deciding what you can do. And in 2010, he gave me a great opportunity. I was elected to be the state, uh, the state deputy for the Knights of Columbus here in Missouri. Now, you've heard a lot about the Knights of Columbus tonight. For those of you who don't know what the Knights of Columbus is, it's the largest lay Catholic organization in the world. 1.8 million men worldwide, 43,000 here in Missouri. In approximately 280 active councils scattered throughout the state. Now, the Knights have always been formed on the basis of charity, and working for those who need help, the less value in society. And being a Catholic organization, it's obviously made sense that the Knights of Columbus has always been at the forefront of the pro-life movement. In 2009, they saw the wave of the future with the up-to-date ultrasound technology. And they said, you know what, we can put our money where our mouth is. So the national organization said, 
for every local council or state council that buys an ultrasound machine and places it in a pregnancy resource center, the Supreme Council, the National Council, will pay 50% of the cost. Now that's a pretty, pretty uh, big commitment. These machines generally cost about $35,000. So that's a heck of a commitment. So I get to be state deputy. And that two years I was state deputy, I learned a lot of things. There are two things that I learned that are important for this evening. The first thing I learned is that you have to take advantage of the opportunities that have been placed before you. Because you may not get another one. And God gives you those opportunities for a reason. In 2010, Missouri had yet to participate in the Knights of Columbus Ultrasound Initiative. No ultrasounds had been placed by the Knights. So I was approached by an individual and who shared with me that. and I thought that was wrong. And we needed to get involved in this. So we established what we're calling a meat life campaign. And the Knights of Missouri have decided that we're going to work with pregnancy resource centers to change the culture. Now I'm happy to report, you can apply. <laughs> As of today, the Knights of Missouri have placed 34 ultrasound machines wow. in pregnancy resource centers. That's more than any other state in the order. Wow. Yeah. Now we're close to being, we're ahead of Texas. Texas has three times as many nights uh, as we do. Uh, they started a year before we did, but I'm very, very proud uh, of what the Knights uh, have been able to accomplish. The generosity they've shown, uh, so that you cannot underestimate the power, the power of God, and the power of, of each individual who has stepped forward to want to be a part of this. Uh, St. Genevieve, uh, obviously, it's been talked about, they got involved. You know, we've raised over $1.1 $1 .1 million in, just since July 1st of 2011 uh, for this program, which is amazing. <laughs> so you can't Take it, you have to take advantage of the opportunities you were given. But the other thing I learned is the importance of the Pregnancy Resource Center. Everybody sing hallelujah. Everybody praise his name. Everybody sing hallelujah. Praise his name today. One last time. Praise his name today. I thank you all.
thank you on your behalf. We, extending a hand, giving you. This next song is a beautiful worship song. My good friend over here, he is from, uh, he wrote it. He's from Colorado. He's been singing a song for, for many years, and it fits just about everywhere we go. If not, it's one of the strongest songs of the night. Because it's all about we worship you, Lord. And I want to remind you Christmas Day. <laughs> Messiah. He was the smartest one of all. He couldn't come, I am God, he just wiped us out of the way. <coughs> Made his move and much by him. But we were to do everything for him. And we still need to help him. You know, we think that. But in the background, he's doing everything for us. Amen. So tonight, let's give him a little bit extra of our time. This gentleman has traveled all over the country and different parts of the world with me. We've co-written songs together. When he was younger, he won a prize to work with the Doobie Brothers in Chicago. Two big groups of, the, what, 60s, probably? 60s, 70s? Amazing bands. That, you know, I remember as a kid. Oh, man, I love to go see those guys. <laughs> has a great heart, has been from a camp campus minister to a liturgist. Please put your hands together from Greeley, Colorado, Mr. Patrick Smith. It's a privilege just to sit here and pray with you tonight. Just a little bit of myself, I am married. I actually just recently celebrated 33 years, just a couple months ago. says the first few years were pretty good. <laughs> I'm proud to say I have grown children and I have a grandpa. Actually, I have five grandchildren. Now I'd actually like to pray for one of my little granddaughters. Her name is Sienna Catherine. She is going to her third year of fighting leukemia. So I don't say this to make you feel sorry because so many children do fight this, but it's all about the quality of life there, too. So her name is Sienna. She's my little angel warrior. And I do believe in a miraculous healing God. Amen? Amen. This is a very simple song I'm going to share with you. Sometimes I think we complicate our prayer life so much because maybe we can't think of the words that we need to say or whatever we need to do. There's a time, many times in my life, I felt very inadequate before Christ. Like, I'm not the being the man I should be, or the husband I should be, or the father, or the grandfather, or the minister, go on and on. You can stand before Christ, Lord, I don't, I don't feel like I'm adding up. And I believe every one of us here can raise our hand and say, yeah, I've, I've felt that way. When I really look at things realistically, am I adding up? And these words just convicted me. And it was just, you know what, Pat? Sometimes God has to call me by name because I'm kind of deaf. I understand that. It's like, you know, adore me with your life. With your life. With your actions, with your words, with your successes, with your failures, with your joys, and with your sorrow. In all things, adore me. And that can be difficult in a world like today where everything is instantaneous and we're told how to act and how to live and how to love and car to drive, what credit card to use, and, and on and on and on. And I think it's one of the things that takes away the value of life for the clients that come to these centers because they don't understand that those things never define us. And each and every one of us, and especially for the children in those wombs of those mothers thinking about abortion, God has already defined that person's life. Amen? Our lives were defined in our mother's womb. Don't they deserve that same chance? So in a little while, you will be asked to adore with your life, and part of that means adorn with your money. 
your gifts and your challenges and the things that God's given you. But let's pray this together. The words are, we worship you, Lord. We praise your name. We adore you with our lives. I've always imagined it as standing before Christ, the foot of the cross, basically naked with everything. All the stuff around us taken away. And hopefully for each one of us, you will say, you ran a good race, good and faithful servant. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. It was like this. We worship you, Lord, and we praise your name. We adore you. just haven't woken him up yet but he's there 
Sometimes it's our job to wake him up in them. Because you see, all of us are worthy of the miracles and joys of Jesus Christ. From the poorest to the richest, from the sickest to the healthiest. Because God's not going to look out there and say, you know what? I don't know. I don't care if you're rich or poor. And I don't care if you're sick or healthy or able-bodied or disabled-bodied or Anglo or Hispanic or Colombiano or Canadian, whatever, because my miracles, the miracles of Jesus Christ are for all people. Amen? Amen. So let's sing that again. And I'll tell you, I've been a teacher many times in my life and I give you about a C- minus right now. <laughs> I know maybe we come from different places, but we come to... We come to praise one God. So here's a few pointers. You can think, you know, Pat, the Lord gave me the worst voice. It's horrible. The way I look at it, and He gave me that horrible voice, give it back to Him. Okay, He wants to hear you. He really does. Or you're thinking, I am so shy, I can't sing. These people on the table are going to hear me. If you close your eyes and sing loudly, no one will hear you. So let's praise Him, okay? We worship You, Lord. We praise Your name, and we adore You with our lives. That's what we're doing here tonight, and hopefully going forward. It's our lives, it's our actions, it's how we love those among us, especially the least among us. The least. Let's praise Him. We worship You, Lord. There You are. And we praise Your name. We adore
vamos a hacer uno, dos, tres. Your part for me.
you have the face just the size of a mustard seed. That's what the Lord said to me. If you have the face just the size of a mustard seed. That's what the Lord said to me. Say to that mountain. In society. Pregnancy Research Center is that window, is that opportunity for women who are at risk. These women who are so desperate and think there is no way out. I once heard it said from, from a pregnancy resource director who's been doing it for a long time, he said, I've never met a woman who wanted to kill her baby. But they feel like they have no alternative. They feel like they have no way out. And then they live with that regret for the rest of their life. Well, pregnancy research centers are that opportunity. They are that resource. They are that alternative to those women who are in need and who are so desperate. And they give them hope. And they show them the way. They show them there is an alternative so they can choose life. That is the importance of pregnancy resource centers. Now I'll tell you how important this particular option for women center is. You know, a year ago, or two years ago, I guess I should say now, the, the only pregnancy resource center in southeast Missouri was in Park Hills. That meant that there was nothing between Park Hills and the Arkansas border for a woman to go. That is outrageous. <coughs> Thankfully, the great people of the board here had, had stepped forward and said, no, no, no. We're going to have one in our neighborhood. We're going to have one in our community. And the options for women's center took hold. Another one in Cape Girardeau has, has, uh, is getting under operation. And now we have another one going to be getting started in Sexton. So we are drilling along the, the corridor. Now there are about 55 pregnancy resource centers across the state of Missouri. So they are all working hard and all doing a great job. Everybody here wants to see this center succeed. We wouldn't be here if we did not want this center to succeed. But the reality is options for women won't succeed without us. That's why we're here. And we have to really look at ourselves and, and reflect and think, this would not be here. But for the hard work of a handful of people who decided that we needed to have this for the women in this area, it wouldn't be here. But for the generosity of the donors and the sponsors from last year, it would never have opened its doors. And but for the generosity of those in this room, it won't stay open. And women won't have that alternative. They won't have that opportunity. That is the challenge this evening. That is what we are here for. So each table has a table host. And I believe those table hosts have envelopes. And they're going to be handing those envelopes out to you this evening. There's pledge cards in there. Now, you can write a check. No electronic checks, I'm told, right, Chris? No electronic checks. But you can write a check. You can also use your credit card or debit card. And you can make a pledge. You can even, I understand, you can have automatic withdrawals from your bank account if you make a pledge. So what we're going to ask you to do is to open your hearts and minds and reflect on why God has placed you here this evening. Reflect upon the opportunity that he has given you to be here tonight to help options for women and to help the women of the St. Genevieve area who are desperate and have nowhere to turn so that they don't make that trek down 55, or up 55, to Planned Parenthood on Euclid, or Lindell. 
and abort their baby. That's, that's the challenge. You know, there, this center is, has not been open long enough to do the statistical analysis, but there are centers that have been in business a while and they've done the analysis of taking the overhead, of taking the cost of the training and the staffing and the materials and what it actually takes to save a baby. And they'll tell you that it costs about $500 to save the life of a baby. Seems like a pretty small price. Less than $2 a day, and I can save the life of a baby? It seems like an incredible deal. Some in this room will be able to do more than that. And they may be moved to do that. Fortunately, uh, due to the assistance of, of Kevin and the Missouri legislature, we have what are called tax credits. I'm not as well versed as Kevin, I'm sure, but as I understand it, it's a 50% tax credit, Kevin? 50% tax credit to any qualifying pregnancy resource center. The, the Options for Women Center is a qualifying pregnancy resource center. Let me, let me explain that. This is huge. She's 50%. I want to explain this. The state of Missouri is going to give you 50% of the money you pledge back. Once you write the check. 50%. Now you can take all of the deduction off your state income tax. You can take the whole deduction off your federal income tax. So if you're in a 25% tax bracket, it will cost you $190 to give a thousand. It will cost you $1,900 to give ten thousand. If you're in a 33% tax bracket, uh, it's 140 bucks for the thousand dollar gift. Right, so check with your accountant, but this is the way to give. The other thing, the way you can give if you have appreciated stock. You bought Walmart 20 years ago, and you say, well, I can't sell it now because I'd have to pay too much taxes on it. Right? You can give that appreciated stock to this organization. Say you had a thousand dollars in it, it's now worth 5,000. You can give that $5,000 of the stock, the organization will get $5,000. You won't have to pay taxes on the $4,000 gain, and you get 50% of it right back, almost 90% depending upon your tax bracket. So not only do you save the capital gain, you get the vast majority of it back. I just want you to think about that. So instead of thinking about 10 and 100, think in terms of 1,000 and 5,000. You're going to get the vast majority of it back. If you've got questions about that, see me afterwards. But I wanted to plug that part. And thanks to Senator Romine, who's got the bill now in the Senate. We're, we're, we're actually, because the number of centers have increased by 30% in the last three years, our cap is at $2 million, And we're bumping it to two point five if we can get it through the Senate. We've just been assigned to the committee today. So use it. If we have to fight for it every year, use it. Get the money back. Make your money work more for this organization. Thank you. And, and why, I'm sure you're not wondering this, but I'll say it anyway. Why does the Options for Center need, Options for Women Center, need this money? Think of all of the, the services that they're providing these women. Think of the the volunteers and the staff that needs to be trained, of the, of the salaries of the, you know, the people that we need to have, the qualified people that we need to have that have had to do this work day in and day out, the special need that they have. Or all the materials that, that this center gives out to the women who make that decision to choose life. Educational materials. Overhead, just for having a facility. All of those things cost money, and no service that that center provides is revenue enhancing. The source of their revenue is you. All of their services are free to these women. So we need that revenue to keep this center open, to keep that alternative alive. You know, there may be times when it, it's easy to get disheartened, especially after we've been fighting this battle for 40 years. 
But there's reason for hope. There's reason for hope. The new Marist poll that was conducted in December of 2013 reported that 53% of Americans now believe life begins at conception and are pro-life. First time they percent of Americans believe abortion is morally wrong. 84 percent of Americans believe there need to be serious restrictions on abortion. These are not the numbers of a fringe lunatic minority. This is America. This is America's voice. We have to make that voice heard. These women hear society and the culture that is on TV or in the media. That is not the true spirit of America. That's not the true voice of America. It's not the true feelings of America. We are the true feelings of America, and we need to let that be heard. Last year, in 2013 alone, just from the pre you're asking yourself, can I make it? Can I really make a difference? The Meet Life campaign I talked to you about, placing ultrasound machines. In just the pregnancy resources, we placed ultrasound machines in. We had them report to us the number of women who came in who wanted an abortion, who refused to have an abortion after they saw their ultrasound that the Knights purchased. Last year, in 2013 alone, more than 1,650 babies were saved in Missouri. You talk about making a difference? There's your difference. 1,650 babies in Missouri alone from pregnancy resource centers doing the day in and day out work. We have to give these women a choice, a distinction from the death and destruction of the abortion industry. I mean, this is a marketing thing. When a woman is desperate and she is pregnant and she thinks that she has to have an abortion, she's got two choices. She can go into the abortion store or she can go into the pro-life store. And our job is to get her into the pro-life store, into the pregnancy resource center, instead of into Planned Parenthood. That is why we are here tonight. So let's send a message tonight. Let's send a message of strength to the abortion industry that we're not going away. Let's send a message of hope to the women of this community that we will be there to help them in their need. Let us be vigilant in our cause to build a culture of life. Thank you very much. somebody else here in a second, but I've uh, got a little bit more material, so uh, stay with me here. Guy goes into a bar, has a drink, takes a peanut. Peanut, before he goes in his mouth, says, hey, you're looking good. Wow, he takes another drink and has another peanut and says, hey, that's a great looking tie. Finally, he eats another peanut. The peanut says, hey, I bet you're going to get lucky tonight. He finally looks at the barkeep. He says, what's the deal with the, these peanuts? He said, they're complimentary. <laughs> they're complimentary. And they're a little... <laughs> you know, we got a, a table bag going like this all the time. Right? <laughs> it reminds me of, of the guy, you know, he was pretty, a pretty proud guy. He's got, he, he couldn't hear very well, but he went and got a hearing aid. And he was telling his friend, he says, this is the best hearing aid ever made. It's the most expensive hearing aid, it's the smallest hearing aid, it's got the smallest battery, it will last a lifetime. This is the best, I can, I will only get the best, this is the best hearing aid ever made. His friend says, well, what kind is it? He's about 1230. <laughs> hearing aid! Hearing aid. Well, never mind. All right. 
50-50, let's wrap them up, get them pulled up. Anybody needs the last one, let us know, and then we're going to draw it here in a second. So if you need the last chance, go ahead. Is uh, Daryl here? Where's Daryl? Daryl going to auction this guitar off. Come on up, Daryl. He's going to do the, the guitars over here, I believe. Thank you for your support. 